Liv Morgan is your new women's tag team champion and one of the top stars in WWE today. Five years ago though, she was just a member of a jobber faction. So what happened? Today we're going to be discussing the meteoric rise of Liv Morgan. Subscribe to the channel, you have until a 3 count. Hope you beat the count and let's get into the video. Gianna Daddio was signed to the WWE in October of 2014, having been a longtime fan of professional wrestling. She signed a developmental deal and reported down to NXT and the Performance Center, and at first would make a couple appearances on TV only as a plant in the audience or just playing extra roles. And she was wrestling on the NXT house show scene, originally using her real name of Gianna Daddio, but on the November 4th, 2015 episode of NXT, she would debut on TV in ring under the ring name of Marley, losing to Eva Marie and she was only working as a jobber. She would then continue again on the house show circuit under the name of Marley, but on her next appearance on NXT on the December 2nd episode just less than a month later, she would take on her new ring name, another new ring name once again, of Liv Morgan. Once again though, losing to Emma. And this was more or less the story of Liv Morgan for a couple of years in NXT, you know, just losing. Liv Morgan for most of her time in NXT wasn't necessarily a jobber, but she was more or less just a lower card wrestler on NXT. She was in a good spot getting regular TV time and being on TV regularly, but she was never involved in title programs or wrestled on takeovers. So it was surprising when on the November 21st, 2017 episode of SmackDown Live, Liv Morgan would make her main roster debut alongside Ruby Riot and Sarah Logan, establishing themselves as the Riot Squad. The next week, Liv Morgan and the rest of the Riot Squad would make their main roster debut, actually defeating Charlotte Flair, Naomi and Natalia. A big win to start things off for them. Then, next week, they beat Carmella, Natalia and Tamina in a six-person tag match, and then two weeks later, Later, they beat Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair and Naomi in a six person tag team match. The Riot Squad were on a roll and it looked as though they were a threat to the Smackdown Live women's roster, but it went downhill literally right from here. The next week, Liv Morgan suffered her first loss on the main roster to Naomi in just three minutes, and then five days later, she was a part of the first ever Women's Royal Rumble. She lasted five minutes, scored zero eliminations, and got eliminated by Michelle McCool. The Riot Squad would pick up things again as Charlotte Flair would engage in a feud with them and Ruby Riot specifically. As Charlotte Flair would defeat Liv Morgan, Sarah Logan and then Ruby Riot for the title in consecutive matches. Damn. The Riot Squad would only get their occasional win when it was them teaming in a six person tag, but if it was any combination of them in a 2 on 2 tag match or a singles match, it was over for them. They were part of the WrestleMania 34 Women's Pre-Show Battle Royal where, once again, they didn't really do anything in it. I think they teased like Sarah Logan firing up and looking like she could win, but then she just didn't. They were drafted to Raw in the Superstar Shake-Up and then from here, they were just cemented as jobbers pretty much for a long while. While they were on TV every week, they were usually losing other than the occasional win. They were part of feuds, but they would never really wrestle on pay-per-views apart from from Ruby who would get the occasional pay-per-view match being the leader of the group, but Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan were more or less just jobbers and side pieces of the Riot Squad. They would actually get their first pay-per-view match in 2018 though on the Super Showdown show in 2018, that show that happened in Australia. It was a six-person tag, they lost to Ronda Rousey and the Bella Twins. But they got another pay-per-view match that same month as they got to be a part of the Evolution pay-per-view, once again a six-person tag where they were losing, this time to Bailey, Natalia, and Sasha Banks. This was a really good match though. And from here, once again, Liv Morgan and the Riot Squad just continued in their stride as jobbers. They were all in the Royal Rumble 2019, which uh, Liv Morgan got eliminated from in about two seconds or something. What was it again? It was eight seconds, not two, so a little longer, but it's still the shortest time spent in the Women's Rumble match, a record that Liv Morgan holds. The Riot Squad would be split up in that year's Superstar Shake-Up when Liv Morgan was moved to SmackDown, whereas Ruby Riot and Sarah Logan remained on Raw. And this was a bit of a shock, however, it was also really exciting because Liv Morgan had improved a lot as a wrestler, and it was really exciting to see what she could possibly do as a singles wrestler now on the SmackDown brand. But um... 
she didn't really end up doing anything on SmackDown. She was drafted to SmackDown in April 2019, but she wouldn't wrestle until the 16th of July 2019. And in fact, I think that was like her first appearance on SmackDown was three months later. She turned babyface when she confronted the SmackDown Live Women's Champion Charlotte Flair. This was just a week after Kevin Owens had endorsed her in his work shoot promo saying she should be on TV more. She would lose to Charlotte in a two minute match by submission but it was an all out two minute match and Liv Morgan actually looked pretty good in that two minutes somehow but then she would not appear for SmackDown or on the SmackDown brand again. A draft took place again that year on the October 14th episode of Raw, where Liv Morgan was the final overall pick of the year's draft, being drafted back to the Raw brand. And a couple months later, vignettes would begin to air, which would see the return of Liv Morgan. And these were the vignettes showing her in the bath and hyping up her return. And she would return on the December 30th episode of Raw, during Bobby Lashley and Lana's wedding. Yes, we all remember this. This is when she professed her love for Lana. Liv Morgan would get mixed up in the Lana, Lashley and Rusev storyline and begin feuding with Lana or she was in love with Lana but then they just scrapped the being in love thing. Yeah. It was a dreadful storyline that went absolutely nowhere but Liv Morgan would come out on top on the feud and she would stride on as a babyface single star on the Raw roster. She was part of the Elimination Chamber match that year where Shayna Baszler just absolutely squashed everyone in the match, Liv included. And she was a part of the WrestleMania 36 pre-show where she defeated Natalia, getting a win at WrestleMania. So, pretty big for her. And obviously, this was now the pandemic era of WWE where it was empty arena and Raw and SmackDown and all the shows just had a completely different vibe. And a lot of people getting pushed more and Liv Morgan was on TV quite often at this point. Her and Ruby Riot would actually reunite on the June 22nd episode of Raw and the Riot Squad was now back and they would be in pursuit of the women's tag team titles. She was drafted back to SmackDown in October 2020 along with Ruby Riot as the Riot Squad. They were a part of the Survivor Series brand warfare match which they lost. And throughout the time that Ruby and Liv were teaming again, they had various shots and chances at the Women's Tag Team Championships. They wrestled on night one of WrestleMania 37 in the Women's Tag Team Gauntlet match. A match that they had a great showing in, eliminating two teams, and then they ended up losing to Natalia and Tamina. God, they should have won that match. Why did the Riot Squad not win that match? Ruby Riot was suddenly released from the company in the May 2021 budget cut releases and was out of WWE, so Liv Morgan had to become a single star once again. But Liv Morgan, for the last couple years teaming with Ruby Riot again, had shown so much improvement, and now a singles run felt completely right. A babyface Liv Morgan, everything was in place, and this should be good. She wrestled at the Money in the Bank 2021 pay-per-view in a match I was convinced she was gonna win but unfortunately didn't as Nikki A.S.H. won. But Liv Morgan was really showing up as a singles wrestler, you could see the improvement in every match and when she was drafted back to the Raw brand she started to get a pretty good singles push. She was wrestling with the likes of Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's Championship, they had a very good match on the WWE Day 1 pay per view in 2022 and she was mixing it up with the likes of Bianca Belair, Dewdrop and many others on the roster and she was one of the top dogs for the Raw Women's roster. She competed on night 2 of WrestleMania 38, teaming up with Rhea Ripley in the Women's Tag Team Title 4-Way. The match won by Sasha and Naomi, where they held the titles for so long afterwards and had a really long reign. Following Rhea turning heel on Liv Morgan and joining the Judgment Day, Liv Morgan and Rhea would begin feuding and Liv Morgan would also begin teaming up with AJ Styles and Finn Balor to take on the Judgment Day. They wrestled at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view in a 3v3 mixed tag match won by the Judgment Day. Liv Morgan would be a part of the Money in the Bank ladder match at Money in the Bank 2022, which she would win. And this was massive and completely deserved, something people wanted to see. And I was excited to see her have a long time with the briefcase, you know, tease the cash ins, but I wasn't really too unhappy when she would cash in the same night to defeat Ronda Rousey for the SmackDown Women's title. A crazy moment that, to be honest, came out of nowhere. I was not expecting her to do it the same night, but it was a great moment. And I'll tell you what, a lot of people like to shit on Liv Morgan's title reign. 
I think she had a great showing as champion. She was on TV every week, she carried the belt like a star, and hey, she had a couple successful defenses. She defeated Ronda Rousey at SummerSlam in a bit of a, a weird match, I will say, a weirdly booked match, but she defeated Shayna Baszler at Clash of the Castle in a pretty good match, I thought. However, she would lose the title to Ronda Rousey in an Extreme Rules match at Extreme Rules 2022, ending the reign prematurely at 98 days. But from here, Liv Morgan was absolutely cemented. She was now a main eventer in the women's division, and that can be seen by how she did in the Royal Rumble match in 2023. She started out at number two alongside Rhea Ripley, who was number one, and them two ended up being the final two of the Royal Rumble. Liv Morgan obviously did not win, but what a great showing her and Rhea both had from one and two. And that's more or less where we find ourselves today. Liv Morgan began teaming up with Raquel Rodriguez recently because the WWE Women's Tag Team Division, every team is just a thrown together team, pretty much. And on the 10th of April 2023 edition of Monday Night Raw, Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez defeated Becky Lynch and Trish Stratus to win the Women's Tag Team titles with Liv Morgan pinning Trish Stratus. The first pinfall loss for Trish Stratus in 16 years, the first time she got pinned, and it was by Liv Morgan. 